Hello there and welcome to the AN24 aircraft familiarization tutorial. This tutorial will serve to familiarize us with the AN24 or the Antonov 24 aircraft designed for the X-Plane flight simulator. The AN24 is a regional twin turboprop aircraft which is sold as payware for the X-Plane flight simulator. I would like to thank Andrei Kuziaruk, also known as Felis, for designing this beautiful aircraft. It took me a long time after purchasing this aircraft from the xplane.org to figure out how to fly it and understand it properly. Part of the reason is because I couldn't find any tutorials in English. So, once I learned about the aircraft, I felt I should create a tutorial in English for others to be able to enjoy it. Before we get into it, I'd like to point out that I'm using version 1 of this aircraft that was released in around 2010. Currently, I believe the aircraft is in version 2, but many of the concepts of version 1 will carry over. The version of X-Plane that I'm using is version 9.70. With that said, let's begin. You can see here that I have the aircraft opened in Plane Maker, which is an aircraft model creation utility that comes with the X-Plane flight simulator. I don't know much about Plane Maker, but I chose to show the aircraft here first because it is easier to see it from different angles and get a look at its physical attributes so that we can get more comfortable with its systems and control surfaces. Here you can see some of the moving surfaces of this aircraft. I apologize that you cannot see the rear or main landing gears. I'm not sure how to make them visible in Plane Maker, but you can see the gear heels that are used around the main landing gears when the aircraft is put into parking mode. Don't worry, the plane does not look like this in the actual flight simulator. You can also see the grounding wire hanging from the tail of the aircraft as well as the front landing gear in motion. Let's take a look at the 3D view so that you may get familiar with the relative dimensions of the N24. You will note that the AN24 also has retractable landing and taxi lights which you can see coming in and out of the wings. Now, let us launch the aircraft in the X-Plane Flight Simulator and familiarize ourselves with the aircraft's instrumentation and functions as they pertain to the X-Plane Flight Simulator. We have our N24 parked at Chitral Airport, also known as Chitral Hawaii Adda, in beautiful northwest Pakistan. The identifier for this airport is Oscar Papa Charlie Hotel. I have a custom scenery package for this airport, which is designed by me and is available as freeware on the xplane.org website. Let us start exploring this aircraft by first looking at its main menu, and that is the black bar here that you see on the left side of the screen with all the various buttons in it. These buttons open panels which serve as doubles to the different areas of the cockpit in the N24. For example, Nav 1 will open the navigators panel which you can interact with just as you could if you were looking at it in the cockpit. Note also that these panels are resizable. You grab them at the bottom right hand corner and you can resize them whichever way you like just like you can a normal window on your desktop. You can close these panels by pressing the X on their top right hand corner or you can press the button on the black bar that corresponds to the panel. Some of the panels included are the camera view, nav 1 view, nav 2 view, the electric panel which is part of the overhead panel inside the cockpit, the fuel panel, the left panel or the panel that occurs to the left of the captain's seat, the right panel or the panel that occurs to the right of the first officer seat, the autopilot panel, the radio panel which shows NDB navigation frequencies and DME frequencies, the service menu panel, 
Weight and Configuration Panel, Information Panel, Navigator's Ruler Panel, Map for Navigation, and the Options Control Panel. I will now go through and explain some of the items in the main menu. The items that I will not explain will be covered during our in-cockpit portion of the tutorial. The cam button brings up a camera window with clickable points so that you can click to see different parts of the cockpit. It acts as a quick and convenient way of changing views. For example, here's the captain's panel and if I click on the co-pilot panel you can see that it brings up the co-pilot's panel. Here you can see that I've got the overhead panel and if you want to go back to the exterior view you simply switch using your joystick pre-assigned button or you could do it from the menus up top. The serve button brings up the service menu where we can get the aircraft ready for flight. Here we can control various things such as opening and closing of the aircraft's doors and hatches such as you see me doing over here. You can also control deployment and removal of the gear heels for parking as well as removal and replacement of pitot tube and engine inlet and outlet covers. I encourage you to explore this menu in further detail on your own. Note that at the bottom there are two fast or shortcut like buttons that will quickly put the aircraft into parking mode or ready to start mode in case you don't feel like clicking each individual item every time you fly. So here I will go ahead and click on the prepare to flight button and you'll see that it pretty much turns all points green except for the ground power. Likewise to do the opposite you click on the parking button and it will quickly redeploy the gear heels, pitot tube covers and the other various items. That is the service menu. The next item we will cover is the load configurator. Let me go ahead and open that. The load configurator allows you to control the overall weight and the weight distribution or balance of the aircraft prior to flight. You can use it to specify how many passengers are on board and their location within the aircraft by clicking the up and down arrows next to each item. For example, here on the left item number six passengers seated in rows three and four I can increment or decrement that number and you see all the other options adjusting themselves accordingly you will also see that as you make these changes the aircraft's CG or center of gravity is instantaneously recalculated so that you may know whether you've exceeded any safety limitations so that you can reconfigure the weight before you take off I usually don't delve into the load configurator too often as the default values are real enough for me. The load configurator does require some scrutiny to understand it better and use it properly. The info panel is a quick notepad style view of information critical to proper flight and navigation. At a glance it shows what your ADF and VOR selected frequencies are as well as what VOR radials you have currently selected for navigation. You will also see your DME frequency and distance to or from the DME source indication here. Finally, it also shows current altimeter settings. The NL10 panel is a navigator's slide rule. It is used by the navigator to determine things pertinent to navigation such as true airspeed, ground speed, and how these quantities may be affected by ambient temperature and other factors around the aircraft. It is used also to calculate various other quantities but we will not go into their details in this basic tutorial. You do not need extensive knowledge of the NL-10 to enjoy flying the N-24 in X-Plane but it does add a nice touch of realism. Just to show you what it can do, some of the things you can calculate are angles of turn, radiuses of turn, distances, true altitude, true airspeed. This is just if you want to really get into the realism. The map panel is used to show maps 
that may be of concern to your current flight, but you must first upload these maps to this aircraft's directory as picture files. Instructions on how to do this are contained in the aircraft's user's manual. The options panel is used to control the level of realism that you wish to use while flying this aircraft. Among the many things you can control here are how much of a hard landing your tires will tolerate before they burst, whether or not your brakes will overheat if you use them excessively during a landing roll, and whether you wish to use a GPS for navigation versus using just traditional nav aids such as VORs and NDBs along with pilotage and dead reckoning. Please take some time to read through the aircraft's manual on what the various options here are and what they do. For most of my flights, I set everything close to as real as it gets, but that's just my preference. We will now proceed with taking a look at the cockpit instrumentation of the AN-24.